Hi and welcome to week one part two and today we're going to talk a little bit about the mentality of a programmer and some preconceived notions and what one might think if one hasn't really met with programming or programmers before. So what does a programmer look like according to you? Because I know that according to me, before I met programmers and came in contact with coding myself, I had a lot of ideas about what programming was or who did the programming. To me, it was like a big black box and I didn't know where one would start to pull out a thread to unravel how to even start learning, uh, where to begin, what's good to know, what you need to know. And I also didn't know, I didn't think I might be smart enough. And I feel like a lot of people feel that way, that they wouldn't be smart enough. So let's address this a little bit. Nothing with programming is an innate talent. It is not something you need to have in your genetics, like being tall for basketball. Uh, it is a skill that anyone really can learn. Um, it's not much more difficult than learning a language and it's about repetition, not giving up and about just getting the experience of doing it over and over and over again. But it is something that is accessible to anyone who wants to do it. Another preconceived notion I had was that you had to know a lot of math. And the reality is you do not need to know a lot of math. Um, math gets associated with programming a lot because programming does involve problem solving. And even though one might not realize this when you go to school and learn math, math really is about problem solving. Having a problem and applying the rules of math to, fix, to solve that problem. And programming is much the same way where you have a problem and you need to approach it and learn how to solve it using the language that computers speak. So that is one reason why math gets associated a lot with programming. And another reason is that there is some programming that does require a lot of math. So some examples are encryption. There are mathematicians that work on um, making algorithms to encrypt sensitive information. But that could be one mathematician spending years on one encryption technique or encryption algorithm. This is not something that is universal for all programmers. Another um, practical application where you might need math in programming is if you work with AI and machine learning. But much like, for example, being uh, learning how to do law, one type of lawyer might not know all types of law. You might be working with families or you might be working with businesses and you don't know the intricate rules and laws of another domain but it's all still law. And it's sort of the same thing with programming. Even though you kind of know the basic principles, you don't need to know exactly how other disciplines work, other encryption, or if you uh, program on the web, or if you make a game. The skills of working with it, the basic foundation, you will understand. It's just the specifics of this programmer might use this type of program to help them or work within that type of program. Um, or that programmer might work with a game engine, for example. So think of it as one programmer might be working in Word. I'm sure you're um, familiar with that. And another one might be working with Excel. You kind of understand what they do, you know kind of how they work, but that doesn't mean that you're an expert or that you need to be an expert in both. So don't think that you need to do a lot of math. There's tons of areas where you don't get in contact with math that much. But one thing everything does have in common is that every type of programming involves 
problem solving. So if you do think that you might need to know a lot of math, there is some new research that came out of, I think it was the University of Washington, that in fact learning a language or having an aptitude for learning languages and solid reasoning skills is much more of a predictor of being successful in programming than actual math. Because programming is about learning how to express yourself in a way that machines understand. And that comes with learning a new type of language, a new type of grammar, and having a vocabulary of coding. And understanding how to break down problems and apply how a computer works to that problem. So learning a language and knowing how to learn a language and use that language is much more of a predictor of learning how to code and how easy or difficult that might be for you. And you might think because the world of computers is so huge that you might that this coding that you, this, these languages and these um, rules grammar that there's so much that you need to so much that you need to learn, but in fact, computers and the languages that we work in are a lot simpler than human languages. First of all, there's a lot less expressions, a lot less words, a lot less ways that you can express yourself. And there is no room and there is no ambiguity. There's no subtext, there's no gray areas. When you learn or once you learn how uh, to express yourself to a computer, that is applicable in any type of discipline, cryptography, gaming, web programming, doing programs for operating system, anything. Once you know how to express yourself that way, it can be applied to any domain any language, any framework, anything. And it, there is a lot less to learn for programming in terms of words, expressions, and so on. It's just that it's a different way of thinking and that way of thinking might take a little time to get into. And if you just stick with it, you will understand how to do it. So another pre preconceived notion I had was of the loner programmer um, that I saw in movies. The hoodie sitting in a basement, green text on a computer screen. Uh, the faster you work your fingers, the better you are at coding. Um, not talking to anybody, not being good at express, just computers and nothing else matters. And that's not really the reality either. Um, you need to work with people, you need to learn how to speak with people, uh, how to uh, communicate, how to um, work together and collaborate on projects. In fact, most of the time when I've seen uh, friends of mine who, are, who work within the field work, they are on the computer talking, working together, solving problems together, and uh, trying to fix something together. So. It isn't the fact that you need to sit by your computer, you won't ever talk to anybody, and you're just in charge of the whole thing by yourself. It's really important to learn how to uh, work together with people, learn how to communicate, and find a common language uh, when you're working together, and be open to ideas, um, learn how to foster collaboration, learn how to uh, disagree, give feedback, take feedback, um, so you won't be working alone and the the notion of the loner programmer is a very romantic one. It looks cool and you think that there are such geniuses, but rarely is that the case. So don't think that you'll be just sitting in, by a desk by yourself because once you're done, you will be working with people a lot. Another preconceived notion I had when I started out was that everything somebody did that was programming or coding was perfect and that they straight away knew what to do, how things would work and they would just write something and it would just magically be okay straight away. And that is very, very far from reality and from the truth. And expecting yourself to sit down and yield results at the end of the day, every single day, is unrealistic and just going to lead to a lot of stress. 
In fact, a crucial part of coding and programming is to have a starting point and to evolve your code or your idea from that starting point and not being afraid to show other people the work along the way. Don't think that you need to write something and it's perfect and only once you're done is when you should show somebody else because the whole iterative process is key to working with code and to programming. And with that comes a lot of letting go of something being done or perfect in order to show it to somebody else. So by letting yourself not be perfect and show your show other people your ideas, uh, not when they're finished, but when you're working on them, is going to get you um, a lot less stress, first of all, but also it's going to give you uh, feedback and it's going to allow you to not be afraid to get input from other people and to gradually evolve something and not put so much pressure on yourself to just go from zero and here's a complete result to somebody else. So let go of the perfectionism and allow people to see the work along the way. So there are some key mental attitudes that you can adopt that will help you along the way in your coding and programming journey, so to speak. Um, one thing is to never stop being curious. Uh, be humble about what you know and be hungry for knowledge. Um, asking questions, being curious about areas you might not know so much about, it doesn't show a lack of intelligence or experience. Uh, it shows that you want to learn, you want to know more, that you are curious and you are open to be even better at what you're doing than you are now. Um, not only does asking questions foster collaboration, help you get in contact with people, it also normalizes the learning process itself. And when working in teams, it creates an open atmosphere where you can learn from each other. And not only do you benefit from that, from uh, learning from people who maybe have more experiences in areas that you don't, it makes them willing and more open to asking questions themselves where you might impart some knowledge. It also creates a community where you can go or where you can um, be safe and go and ask questions and get help when you uh, maybe are stuck. And it also encourages growth. Um, we all want to grow in this career. We all think we know everything at a certain point, but we don't. And being open and curious and asking questions, it shows that and encourages and makes everybody else want to grow in their knowledge and in their field. And it is very difficult, especially about three months in, to ask questions because you're sitting there with a problem and you're thinking, gosh, I must be the only one with this problem. Everybody else is ahead of me and I'm the only one stuck on this particular thing. But let me tell you that every single programmer has felt that way at some point about something. It changes what that specific thing is for each programmer, but everybody thinks that way. Um, but the truth is that everyone has had that experience of thinking, geez, everyone else is so, so far ahead of me and I'm just here by myself and I don't understand anything and maybe I'm not cut out for this. So this is more of a, of a common experience, something that unites us rather than something that you will be alone with. So take comfort in that. It's not fun to be stuck on something, but everyone has had that experience and you are not alone. So in that moment, it is hard to ask the question, but just know that when you do, everybody has had that experience and asked that question at some point. You just weren't there to see that. So another key thing to adopt one when you learn coding and programming in general is the art of problem solving. Now, 
This is uh, something that comes after some experience and you just need to keep at it. But um, problem solving is about taking a big, big problem and breaking it down into very small components until they seem achievable and, uh, well, and until they seem like parts that you can solve. Um, then it's about analyzing each part and once you've analyzed the parts, putting it into a context and trying it out. And I'm gonna use a very um, silly example from my own personal life to exemplify how this can look. Um, so bear with me. I moved into a new apartment and I wanted to change the shelves in my kitchen cabinet so that I could fit higher, taller um, bottles. And I noticed when I pulled at the, at the shelves themselves that they wouldn't come out. The door of the cabinet itself was in the way for the shelf. I was thinking, gosh, how do they do this? Because I could see that there were these slots where you could actually move the shelf back and forth. So they were clearly meant to be moved, but the door was in the way. So I was like, okay, so how does my landlord fix this? Do they go and make house calls to everybody every time they want to do shelves? That felt very cost ineffective. So that's the context. This seems to be the way you're supposed to use it. You're supposed to be able to move it back and forth, but it's not possible right now. So what is one possibility? One possibility is that somebody else comes and does it. So the context then is, but that seems very expensive. They wouldn't make any money off of that. So then the next logical conclusion was that I have to be able to do it myself somehow. So then if the, door is in the way, next logical conclusion is remove the door. So I looked around where the hinges were and I could see that there were screws. So I thought to myself, well, this is very cumbersome and a bit stupid design, but sure, I'll just um, unscrew the, the hinges and then I can take off the doors, move my shelves around and then that, then that's how it was designed but I needed to figure out what type of screwdriver I would use, how big it should be. So I really took a good look at it and I noticed that there were these grooves in there, almost like buttons that you could push and they were perfectly shaped for a finger. So I thought to myself, well, why would that be there? And if it's perfectly shaped for a finger, let's try it out. So I pushed on it and the hinge puffed, popped off. So there was a mechanism where you pushed at it, that part of the hinge just released the, the door cap, the cabinet of the door. So that was a way to solve problem solve along the way. You break it down, what are you trying to do? And you think of the context and you think what is logical here? What makes sense? So I did that, I could uh, I, uh, on, I pushed the buttons uh, on the top and on the bottom. I could take off a door. And once I had done that, I could um, slide the shelf out of the, the wall slots, switch it out and plug it back in. And this is a way of problem solving where you think about what am I trying to achieve? What seems to be logical? What seems to be possible? And since this isn't logical or possible, or uh, it doesn't make sense within the context, like it wouldn't make sense economically for the landlord to walk around and do this for everyone in the neighborhood, what is the next step? What is the next possibility that I can try? And then of, of course I had to actually push on the thing. I had to try it out to see if my analysis was correct. And it was in that specific case. And the more you problem solve in life that way, breaking something down and trying it out and thinking about both the smaller steps and the broader context, the more you're gonna be able to do it in programming. And the more you do it in programming, the more you're going to do it in your life. 
So try to approach problem solving that way, iteratively breaking things down and remembering the context, but breaking it down so that you can look at one problem at a time. And the last mental way of thinking or, or skill or attitude to adopt that I'm going to talk about today is um, a growth mindset, so to speak, as the psychologists call it. Um, basically, you can have a fixed mindset or a growth mindset. A fixed mindset assumes that we all have innate capabilities and that's where we our um, abilities end. It's predetermined. And if you try something and you fail at it, that means that you're not smart enough uh, or that you shouldn't be doing it. And a growth mindset is that uh, you're allowed to try something out, fail at it and try again. That you trust that once you've tried it enough times, you will start to get the hang, the hang of this. And it um, postulates that we all have a capability to learn and we all have a capability to grow and become better at things. So in the beginning, everybody is pretty bad at programming and that's okay. That's just the way it is. We start off being pretty bad at most things that we try. <laughs> uh, we might not remember it. We might have some things that we've learned in our life that helps us along in other areas so that we learn faster. So we get used to that. And then when we have something that's very different from what we're used to, we might get met with um, not knowing what to do, where to start. And we just assume, oh, this is not for me. I'm just not smart enough. I just don't have what it takes. And that usually couldn't be further from the truth. So there's a lot of preconceived notions that you have to be very, very smart to program. and. I would say that that's not the case. What you have to be is you have to be willing to try and fail and be comfortable in that feeling and trust that you will learn, that you will grow to adopt that growth mindset. I've heard this expression that programming is a profession for smart people who don't mind feeling dumb. Excuse my expression. Um, I do think it has a uh, a little sparkle of truth there um, because when you problem solve inevitably you're going to fail and if you have a fixed mindset you are going to assume that you're the problem and when the whole profession is about trying things out failing and trying something else if you apply that failure to yourself and not to, oh, I chose the wrong thing to try out this time, you are going to dis get discouraged and you might give up and you might start to think that you're not good enough or you're not smart enough or you shouldn't be here. But that isn't, um, that's, a f that's a feature of being a programmer, not a bug. That is just the way being a programmer is. That is what you do. That's what you get paid for. I've had people um, that I know that worked as programmers for 10 years and they still spent two weeks on one problem every single day and didn't yield a result until they had tried so many things and, and spent so much time on it. And not only is trying and failing a part of the profession and what you do on a day-to-day -day basis itself, the field is evolving and growing so fast that you will for be forced to learn new technologies, learn new ways of using code, learn new programs, languages, um, and being willing to relearn things that you already know, or being willing to be humble and try again and learn and fail, and understanding that it's not you that that's just the way the profession is, is going to take a lot of pressure off of you and make you understand that it's, it's just the way programming is. This is what we do. We try, we fail, we try again, and then we succeed. That is the profession. So then no wonder that tech is one of the fields or the field where you have the most people feel having imposter syndrome. Um, 
this is a well-known fact that tech it has a really high percentage of people feeling imposter syndrome. Um, so in order for you to not feel that way, uh, I'm giving you a heads up that that's the way it is and trying and failing is what we do. The failure isn't a reflection of you or your intelligence or your experience level or or anything other than the fact that we need to learn how to try things out, fail and just carry on, basically. So if you want to be a successful programmer, be willing to fail and to feel sometimes like you're not getting anywhere or maybe like you're not getting it. and. Um, don't care just just keep going be curious see it as i can learn something new here i can have this experience and don't apply it to your own abilities at all just continue and try more things out because the mark of a good programmer isn't your iq level it's not giving up on a problem and not giving up on yourself so sometimes you might not have uh, the experience, you might not know something, you might forget something that happens all the time. And a big, big help for every programmer ever is Google. Um, learn how to Google things. Um, that is one of the best skills you can learn because there is so much knowledge. There is there's books, videos, there's so much you can learn. But until you apply that knowledge, you're not really coding, you're learning about computer science. And then when you do encounter a problem, searching through all of the knowledge, the books, the everything that you have, it's not an effective use of time and it probably won't yield a result because they're trying to impart knowledge. They're not trying to solve a problem for you, these, these resources. So learning how to Google your specific problem learning how to express yourself to to um, explain and search for the correct solution one of the key skills you can learn so practice that as soon and as, as and as much as you can and let me tell you the most experienced programmers google the most basic stuff on a day to day, -to -day basis truly and think of it this way you might be a best-selling author of books, of, of fiction. And sometimes you're just gonna Google how to spell a word because you can't have all of every single word in your brain how to spell it and write novels and have characters and all of that. Your brain won't fit all of that knowledge. And it's not really important for you to know exactly how mischievous is spelled. Um, so Googling that, that simple procedure or that simple word that is a tool for you to use. The important part isn't that you know how to do stuff by heart. The important thing is to understand the principles, the underlying ways you can solve things, and then Google away how to specifically write that algorithm or write that code or something, because you already know it exists. You just don't remember it by heart. But just knowing how to apply it, knowing that it exists, knowing that you can use that to solve this problem, that's what's key. Not knowing exactly how to do it. The more you do it, the more you're going to just do it uh, automatically. But the principles and the ways to apply those principles are much more important than knowing by heart how to do something. So remember, the most experienced programmers Google the most basic stuff every single day and lastly we're going to talk a bit about ai and ChatGPT. so ai and ChatGPT is an amazing tool for programmers to use now remember that you are learning so this is not an encouragement to use it to write your, your entire code that you won't understand but when you're sitting there and you have no idea how to move forward, asking ChatGPT, um, hi, I want to do X, Y, Z in this language. How would you approach that? Could you give me a step-by-step -step instruction and explain every single step and what's, uh, and um, explain every single step and, and uh, for a beginner? 
So not only are you gonna see how to do it, you're gonna ask ChatGPT to explain the steps. So you're, you're really learning by using repetition and you're getting an explanation from a teacher who really doesn't need to sleep or eat or do anything besides answer your questions. Um, so it's a great way to um, get the ball rolling or starting to see how to solve a problem or get ideas on how to solve problems. Now, in the beginning, it might feed you a lot of really bad information because in the beginning, you don't have the experience to sort out when it's hallucinating or when it's mixing up languages or when it's getting some stuff wrong, right? And that's fine because you're just trying things out. You're just trying to understand the principles. You're just trying to get the ball rolling. But thinking that you can just type in a problem in ChatGPT, hit enter, and you're going to be able to hand that in and it's going to work every single time is not only unrealistic, it's going to make you a worse programmer because you won't be able to look at something that ChatGPT gives you and say, you know what, I think ChatGPT got confused or maybe I inputted this question wrong. Um, you won't know when it's doing wrong. So during your uh, education, use it as, as a starting point. Ask it, how, how does this work? Explain this step by step. Why should I do this? Absolutely do that. But thinking that you're gonna just be able to copy paste is gonna make you a worse programmer and it's gonna be very embarrassing when you go into an, a, a work interview and they're gonna ask you to do something and then two weeks into the job, it turns out, no, you can't do that thing. So it's gonna come, bite, come back and bite you if you just use it to cheat. But programmers who learn how to use AI, they are going to be more effective and, and every programmer who already has the knowledge uses it to be more effective and faster. So by learning how to do that now and incorporating that into your work, into your learning, you are going to have a tool that is going to make you better. So if you completely avoid it, people who use it effectively are going to have the upper hand on you. So ChatGPT in AI is great but it's great when you use it the right way and when eventually you'll have the knowledge to differentiate what's good and bad information. Now in the beginning, use it as your personal tutor. All the time, just ask it questions. I wanna do this, how do I do it? Explain the steps. And it's going to be like asking your teacher but they're always going to answer whenever you need them. So that was week one, part two, the mentality of a programmer. Um, some, some stuff to think about when you start working with programming and coding. Um, there's a lot of people who quit when they think that they aren't smart enough or aren't good enough and they don't understand that the problems that they're facing is the same for everyone and that everyone experiences it and they think that it's them and not the nature of the work itself so i think that that is the biggest takeaway from this video that you need to not be smart you need to be willing to feel a little bit stupid sometimes and just keep going and keep trying different things and not give up on yourself and on problems and having that is going to make you a better programmer, take a lot of stress off of your life and make you more curious and um, willing to stick it out because you'll trust in yourself and you'll trust that eventually this is going to be a learning experience and not a source of frustration. And I, the programmer, you are going to be a better coder for it. So that's what I hope that you take away from this. Thanks a lot. See you in another video.